Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at state management. Uh, this has been quite a requested topic on the channel, so we'll do our best to explain uh, what it is and how you can use it in your Nano project. So just to give you a recap or an overview of what it is, um, state management allows us to manage the state of a widget. And um, in Nano, under the hood, we have an easy way for you to do that. So if you haven't already, definitely head over to nylon.dev and download the project to get started. And if we head over to the project uh, and just build and run, you should get the same example here. So uh, with that done, um, let's take a look at like an example. So let's build an application that has a shopping cart. And this shopping cart is going to have a icon of how many items are actually in the cart. And we'll just have two pages at the moment just to kind of demonstrate how it works. And we'll go into some more examples in the video. But yeah, let's first create those pages. So from the console, let's just create our first page. So we'll create like a product detail page. And then let's also create a account page as well, like an account page. And then the next thing we'll do is create our widget. So this is going to be state managed in Nilo. Uh, all we need to do is run stateful widget. And then, yeah, we can just add the name. So this is going to be the shopping cart widget icon. Um, and you can see it's created that for us here. Just by the way, if you're wondering what this is, Metro. Um, Metro is essentially uh, this long command here. Um, you can actually just run the same commands from the console using this. But uh, I've created an alias so that I can just use Metro. Um, there's some documentation on the Nilo website if you want to just use Metro like I am in the video. So yeah, let's start adding the widget now to our pages. So this icon is going to be displayed in the yeah, top left hand corner. So let's go over here and just like add it as like an action. So here we can just add like shopping cart. There we go. And yeah, we'll just do the same for the other page. So on the account page, we're just going to also add the shopping cart, just like that. So what we'll do is we'll set the product detail page as the initial page. So if we build and run now, you should see, yeah, the product detail page. And we also have our widget being displayed in the top right hand corner. But uh, yeah, let's just customize the look of this. So it'll be like a really simple widget. So from the product detail page, what we also want to do is connect it to the account page. So we create a page previously here, account page. And what we'll do is just create like a simple UI. Um, I'm just going to create like one button. Let's say it go to we just call it account account page and then we'll just do untap and then we'll just route to the account page so if we just try this you can see it takes us to the account page and we can also come back as well so you can see that's working and we also seen the other widget that we created so the widgets are um, both the same so now let's take a look at some state management so inside our widget uh, at the moment, this is hard coded, and if we set it to five, you see it updates, and if we do it to one, um, but what we want is to update it from another widget. So, what we can do is use the state updated function here, and this is where all the magic happens. So, uh, let's create a new variable inside here, let's just call it cart value, and let's just set this equal to zero for now. And inside here, what we're going to do is just set the, the value equal to data for now. And we'll just update this equal to that value. Just do a pass and set it like that. So at the moment, it's working. As you can see, we have zero here. And if we go to the account page, we also have zero. But um, yeah, let's imagine we want to update the cart now from the account page and we, will also, and we also want it to update the product detail page without having to reload the whole page. So um, let's take a look at that example. So on the account page here, let's just add a new button. So GitHub Copilot helped me out a little bit there, but 
Um, essentially, what's important is that you use the update state function like this, and then just pass in the state that you want to update. So this will be for your widget. So you just need to pass in yeah shopping cart icon that state, and then here where we're setting the data. So let's just try that. So yeah, if we go to the account page and update quantity, you see we get two. If we head back, you'll see that we also see two as well. So that's matching up. But um, if we go to the account page again, you'll see that that value is now reset back to zero. And that's because we're not setting this value. Um, so, so in this init function, what we need to do is call state data like this. And uh, state data is going to contain the last value that was set to the widget. So in our case, it would be like number two. If we build and refresh, and we set this to two now. And then if we go back to the page, you can see now it's setting the data correctly. Uh, if we just print this out, just to show you, um, run it in the console. Let's just build and run. So at the start, we have null. This is the first time the user would boot up our app. This value would be null because um, we haven't set any data to it. But if we go to the account page and then just update the quantity, so now it's two go back and head over again now you can see it's setting it equal to two so that's all working um and yeah that's like one example of using state management in nilo so from any widget now uh if we head back over to the account page and set this equal to let's just do like nine or eight uh update quantity you can see update across our widgets and we could display this widget in as many places as we wanted we could even add multiple of the same widget here uh, just to go a bit crazy and um, let's just update the quantity one more time so let's just do it hard coded for now like this and if we update four and you can see it's updated the state of all those widgets so yeah this is kind of like an easy example just to help you see how it works um, the init function is important for when the widget is first initialized for the first time and state updated is important when you're using the update state function because uh, any data that you pass into here is going to be passed into here and that value can also be retrieved using the data uh, the state data variable there so let's take a look at another example for updating the state um, let's update it from local storage instead of getting the data from this variable um, what we're going to do is just go over to config so in here, I've created a new cart storage key, and all it's gonna do is be responsible for storing the the value for the cart. So uh, let's just implement that. So with that done, I'm also just gonna update the init function as well, because this is gonna have to change slightly since we're getting it from local storage now. So here, what we'll do is just do the exact same and uh, that's what we need to do so now we can just start adding stuff to our local storage um, and we'll just keep the same button as well so let's go head over to here and instead of using data like we are here let's just write a quick function to save it to the collection okay so with this done um, anytime we click the button now we're going to be saving this object to the collection that is in local storage and essentially it's going to build up an array of this this object so it's going to end up something like this but yeah it will be one at a time so and below here we're just updating the state like before but this time we're not passing in that data parameter we're just calling update state and all that's going to do is just call the exact same function here so uh, let's give that a go and see what happens so on the account screen, if we update cart, at the moment we have one, then we have two. If we go back, you can see we have two as well. If we head back over to the account page, we still have two. So the state is being managed uh, from outside the class and um, it makes it, you can kind of see how easy it is to, to handle that. And for example, this code could be anywhere in your project. So it could be in one of your providers, it could be in a controller we could do that now as well just create a quick controller and yeah let's just add that controller and now let's just move this piece of code into the controller so let's call it update 
quantity. So yeah, this will be doing the exact same as what we was doing before, but we're just doing it from a controller now. So now we can just run on uh, widget dot controller, just like update quantity, like so. And if we build and refresh over here, update quantity, you can see that's been updated. And that's all happening from our controller, which is outside of our widget. So um, you can see it's updated here as well. So uh, really powerful and really easy to kind of get started. Um, so in Nala, the easiest way to create a state manage widget is just by calling make and then stateful widget. And then here we can just specify the name of it, just like we did before. Uh, let's just call it maybe like, like icon like that. And then it's just going to appear in your resources dot widgets like so. And you can see we get the same structure as we did before. So we can start to then customize uh, what happens when the state is updated. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.